Remember, this is uncharted territory for us. We don't have cell service, so we have to be careful. The name of the game is going to be patience. Go slow, be careful. We're going to spend the night right here. We're going to camp right here, and we have lobster in the cooler. Are you going to share? I mean, it's better than shrimp on the bobby. It started with a daydream about zombies. Could you survive Z-Day with just a couple of jet skis, some lobster traps, a spear gun, and an island in Maine? After preparing for our trip, setting sail, and catching our lobsters, which we covered in episode one, we set out down the coast to try to find a deserted island. And somehow we found one of the coolest places on the main coast. Perfection. Do you, do you just need some, just want some quiet time? Oh, there's just so much goodness in what happened today and tonight. This is how to live. Look at the claws on this guy. And without any further ado, I welcome you to Lobster Catch and Cook Survival Adventure, Episode 2 from How to Live. Oh my god, this is gonna be good. Honey, you ready? Yep. Have you believed in anything? You're risking your whole life to fulfill a dream. This is the most exciting part of any adventure, finding this new land, finding a new place to camp. You hope it doesn't dash your expectations, and sometimes it does. But in this case, it didn't. We needed a little cove to protect our jet skis away from the direction of the wind. It was just awesome. We couldn't have imagined any better. This is unbelievable. Look at this, I can't believe this exists. Now to figure out how we beach these things and not hurt them. Oh, this is cool, we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna snorkel this bay. Although the visibility is horrible. We have lobster, ramen, beef jerky, trail mix, and I packed a couple Snickers. I tried to sneak them in. Oh my god. I can't get over this. This is, this this is, is quintessential awesome. Maine coast. You have your rocks. You have yeah. your pine trees. We're going to have to be really careful beach. flying a drone and operating a jet ski. And let's see here five feet of pretty rugged water. See if we can have an incident. I'm gonna use the drone to find out our way in right here. Good test. Okay, are you looking ahead of you? Yeah, I gotta go this way. I can see with this drone where I need to go. This is awesome. Perfect. This is awesome. Right, I'm following you. I'm using the drone. I'm flying by drone. Oh, I believe in your Oh, it's a couple seals kicking around for the kill zone. If you like great whites. But they hopefully won't be in here too much. This is like a tropical island find, but up in Maine. How cool is this? Oh, this is not gonna be good for a nugget time. You call yourself a Viking. Oh! <laughs> oh! Meanwhile, I'm fully dressed. <laughs> That's painful! <laughs> I was a little worried about how we were gonna set these skis up on the beach um, and keep them from hitting all the rocks. So we have a line going up to the beach. It's gonna tie the front of it off. And then we have an anchor going on to the back. As long as the wind stays like it is, we should be good. Yeah, I admit it, 550 paracord, not optimum for this job, but it's the only thing we could carry and save space. We didn't get much sleep that night, for sure. On a side note, does this sea do look a little bit like a pissed off hornet floating there like that? Now we knew we were gonna lose tide and put the skis on the beach. And that's why we picked the sandiest part. Once the sea dews were secured and a good spot for low tide, it was time to unpack and get in the water and see if I could spearfish a flounder. I haven't done that since I was a kid. You cold weather drivers will know five millimeter wetsuit for 40 degree water, not optimum. My expectations were pretty low, but we had to give it a shot. Off he goes. Uh, we're about 
hundred yards off the beach at um, White Charts. Um, there's people on the water. And last summer on a trip just 60 miles south, our yeah, eyes were opened. This actually happened. We were flying our drone along a very popular beach when we saw it. We actually saw a 13 foot great white swimming just yards from swimmers and they never even knew. We immediately called 911 and quickly the beach was shut down for the day. But here's what's crazy. This is not the only great white we saw. We saw many. So I guess some might be like, hey, stop being a wimp, just get back in the water. But to me, the recent deaths in Maine and Massachusetts and then their sheer numbers makes you think twice. And it definitely makes you look off into that murky distance when you're in the water with a lot more respect. And if we're being honest, fear. About two years ago, only a few miles from this very location, Maine had its first fatal shark attack. A woman was swimming with her daughter just maybe 20, 30 feet from shore in a dark wetsuit like mine. She was attacked and killed nearly instantly. There had never been a shark attack in the history of Maine. So when it happened, everybody was in sheer disbelief. So much disbelief, there was even confusion at the scene when it happened that she must have been run over by a boat. But that wasn't the case. I can't help but look out in this murky water and wonder how close might a great white shark be to me at this very moment. But quickly my quest for adventure supersedes my fear which happens often and what may be the hunted now becomes the hunter as I'm on a mission to get a flounder. You know, it might be easy to think the colder the water, the less sea life, but that's actually the exact opposite. The cool waters off of New England possess some of the best commercial fishing in the world. And the ocean floor is just alive and teeming with life everywhere. When Z-Day does happen, I'm gonna be very happy we're on the coast because there's plenty to eat, but there's also plenty to look at when you get bored. This is awesome. Do you guys see what I see? Sweet, a couple more. Hmm, these are a little bit strange. Their rough surface looks like an oyster, yet their shape looks like a scallop. In any case, they're gonna be great eating with the lobster. Interesting, looks like an old washed up lobster trap. Also looks like mother nature's busy reclaiming it. It's gonna make a pretty good home for many creatures. After snorkeling around for about a half hour, I was cold and I was about to give up on the flounder. We had three scallops after all. I could have grabbed a couple of crabs, but I figured we had enough. And then it happened. Do you see him? I've shot hundreds of flounder, and to me, this guy is not as camouflaged as usual. Now the biggest challenge for me here wasn't actually shooting the flounder, it was getting everything set up for the camera and not spooking them. The second that you put something close to them, including a spear tip or a camera, they'll bolt and you'll never see them again. yelling coming either he's in danger he's happy or he's pissed off oh we got a flounder awesome buddy he said he's so cool so cool but so happy a good team divides and conquers and they think ahead this fire ended up being pretty timely Thanks, hon. Where'd you bring me? Three. Oh, oh awesome. I'm sorry. Scallops. Oh, I want really nice ice flounder. Oh, that's awesome. So when you flay a flounder, it's a little bit different than flaying a regular pelagic. You actually start from the, from the center line and you work back. I'm sure it can be done the other way. This is how we did it on a commercial fishing vessel. I worked offshore out there, 100, 200 miles offshore to put me through college, doing stuff like this, so. I guess it's great, it all comes back to help you in the end. I'm gonna take this filet right here. Let's 
didn't want to do that. And I'm going to take this nice Lin Q cover. And I'm sure it's not the first time somebody's used it as a fillet board on a deserted beach. But maybe it is. Don't want to lose that. Don't want to lose that. You kind of pull the skin, you let the knife do the work at a kind of like a five degree angle. And there you go. There's our first fillet right there. Look at that. That's as fresh as it gets. That's going to be delicatessen tonight. We throw this back to the to the ocean. And we thank the Lord for a wonderful bounty. I mean, this is awesome to be able to come out here, deserted island in Maine, hop in the water in May, this cold out, and shoot something like this. Oh no! I feel that sun. Oh, we found this abandoned island in Maine. It's May, it's kind of cool, but it's actually really awesome. It had this fireplace already here. We're gonna go ahead and chop that lobster up in half. We're gonna get them on the grill and we're gonna have some din din. So do you want the lobster first or the flounder? Jeremy, or the scallops? Where are the scallops? We're gonna go ahead and do the flounder first. And it's real simple. We're gonna go butter in a fry pan. And that's it. And uh, we're gonna lay it right out there. And it's gonna be amazing. We're gonna hit the top with a little bit of purple spice, which is my favorite, we call it purple spice. It's actually like a rib rub. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it. Look at this. That's as quick as it's so quick. It's so, it's such a thin fillet. It's so quick. We're gonna hit that like that. We're gonna do that like that. We're gonna do a little bit more rib rub. Oh, I can't even wait for this. Oh, this is gonna be so good. You ready? It doesn't get any fresh in this. We literally just harvested this flounder from that little bay right there. Oh my God. That is so awesome. Having good food is not just about the good food. It's about where you are and who you're with. Oh, hey, that was like crusty, buttery, crushed, crusty. <laughs> that was buttery, crusty, good. Can you hear the birds in the background? Birds are chirping. It's magical. She makes fun of me when I say that, but this is a magical moment. This is like one of the coolest moments I think I've ever had in my life. Our jet skis are not going anywhere, anywhere soon. Waves are crashing, birds are chirping, sun is shining, and breeze is blowing. Okay, there's a bunch of ways to prepare lobster, but the easiest way when you're barbecuing is just to cut them in half down the middle and put them on the grate. It's fairly messy and probably not the tastiest way to have it, but when you don't have a steaming pot to cook them in, it's definitely the easiest. Looks like we're not getting out of here tonight, honey. But well, we've got some bugs, we're good. So our game plan from the very beginning for this hypothetical Z-Day catch and cook was to try our very best to eat like king and queens. So obviously we weren't gonna forget about the ramen noodles. So the cuisine strategy was very simple. It was to cook the lobster in the half shell and then saute it in butter to make it crispy and then throw the ramen noodles on top of that to make it even crispier. It was a game plan made for a fire pit with limited resources, but we were hoping we could pull it off. This is the secret magic right here. We did this, we do this on trips. We do bring ramen because why? Because it's really easy to, to carry. It's lightweight. 
just add water and it's so good when you add a protein to it and it's nutritious and it's so nutritious for you it's so good for you oh somebody put butter in theirs and we're gonna have lobster ramen <laughs> Is that a new i've never flavor? had that before huh is that a new flavor that's a new flavor it goes with the soy sauce flavor which used to be the oriental flavor but you can't say that anymore so it's soy sauce flavor Definitely could be Honey, nice hat. That's sporty. Thanks. Not really sporty. That's sporty May and Maine. Got it on Etsy. So we're gonna throw some ramen. We just, uh, it's got plenty of butter in there. We're gonna saute up that ramen. Let that ramen absorb that butter and that lobster. Oh my God, look at this. I'm so excited. Just try this. We'll grab a piece of Ramadan with lobster. That is so rich. That is so incredible. I'm so glad we're about to ramen. Oh my god, the lobster is like snaps in your mouth. That is so good. Honey, I'm gonna get you and then we're gonna eat this. So much butter. What do you have in there? You have a little so bit of butter. ramen and lobster sauteed up. I'm trying to break the lobster up so I'm ladylike when I eat this. It's a catch and cook. I didn't catch the ramen, but I did catch the lobster. Perfection. Dean just needs some, That's some I'm quiet moment. time. Yes, yeah, some silence. Guys, there you have it. We're going to settle down tonight. We're going to um, just enjoy this, shut the cameras off, and really enjoy this. This is just an amazing thing. Uh, there's just so much goodness in what happened today and tonight between the lobsters and the flounder and just being here. My loved one. All right, guys, over and out. This is how to live. What do you think, honey? No two sounds go better together than fire crackling and waves crashing. That's well, those two amazing fresh dishes that we caught from the bottom of the ocean were the highlights of the trip. It ended up being a bit of a restless night for me. I was exhausted, but at the end of the day, literally, I had two jet skis floating in a bay attached with very small line to either end. Anything could have happened. But we woke up to one of the most beautiful sunrises I've ever experienced. The timing of the tides left us no choice but to get up actually at 4 in the morning. Otherwise, our jet skis were going to be stranded on this beach well into the next day. And we both had work the next morning. And we were rushing around and we weren't sure if we were going to be fast enough. You can see here the tide was dropping fast and I actually hung a jet ski up once or twice. It was a pretty close call. When you hang your jet ski up on a beach or some sort of land, it's always important to, to shake it back and forth before you leave. Hopefully this allows for any of the loose sand or aggregate material that might have gotten caught up in your intake while it was on the ground to fall out before you start it. Getting a rock or pebble stuck in your impella can be a bad day. Sidhu has also helped with this problem by inventing a technology called the IDF. It turns your motor in reverse and hopefully kicks everything out from the way it came in. We actually use this capability in about five minutes when we're out of the bay just to make sure we're all set before we get up on plane. And hopefully by using both techniques, you can limit any possible issues you might have by beaching your jet ski. As Sarah runs her IDF, I prepare we get our comms in to head home. The problem is it's a little bit foggy out when we start, we're going to have to stay together. I look down at my GPS for two seconds. I look up and my wife is gone. Honey, you there? Can you hear me? 
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Now, yes, we did have safety equipment. We had radios and we do have GPS, but we had no cell service. And like any deadly accident, it takes a couple of things to go wrong at once and you can be in real trouble, especially miles from shore out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean at five in the morning in fog. Luckily, we had a pre-plan for this and she stayed put and I was able to find her after about five minutes. But I wasn't happy and I was very scared. somewhere off you stay next to me and there you have it mother nature can certainly make you kind of an asshole especially when you're scared to lose somebody you love so much every adventure we go on we learn new lessons and we tuck these away for our future trips and hopefully we learn more and we become safer and besides this scary lesson this trip was one of the most amazing times i've ever had with my wife it's a night that we'll never forget it seems now Maybe we'd do okay on Z-Day. We can't wait. We could definitely survive out here. Especially if zombies can't swim. If you guys like this adventure, go ahead and check out our channel. Explore it. You'll find a bunch of episodes and series just like it. A nice hat. That's sporty. Stay tuned for the next episode on these jet skis where we try to catch a bluefin tuna on one. We're not sure if that's even possible, and we're not sure it's even been done, but we're going to try. I have a feeling it's going to be nicknamed the Nantucket Sleigh Rock. And maybe the lesson of this video is create your own unique adventure with whatever you have. And show us how you like to live. Until next time, boat safe, boat happy, over and out. Gonna move these mountains.